Hi, I'm Sydney and I'm the School Engagement Coordinator with Child's Play. Thank you so much for joining us at the theater to see The Yellow Boat. The Yellow Boat is a very important piece to Child's Play. Our founding artistic director, David Saar, wrote this and when it premiered, it changed the way that artists presented theater for young audiences. We thought you might have some questions about The Yellow Boat, so we made this video for you. We sat down with the cast and we grabbed their insight on the performance. And now we have some questions. When you see the question appear on the screen, go ahead and press pause and discuss with your classroom. And when you're ready to jump back in, go ahead and press play. Let's get started. I think Benjamin, when he discovers um, that he's able to create things, is electrified by it. And that's very exciting. And he kind of goes on this journey where he's discovering his own voice as an artist. And then when um, he comes across some obstacles, he's able to use art as catharsis and um, as a way of processing what's happening. When you are an artist of whatever kind, a performing artist or a, a literary artist or visual artist, that artistry is a part of who you are and it's not something that you could separate. The art was ultimately uh, how he looked, how he saw the world, but ultimately how he was able to heal his own spirit. Why do you think Benjamin chooses to communicate through his drawings? I think the use of um, ribbons and elastics in all sorts of different primary colors uh, help to tell the story because they create lots of different things throughout the play, different shapes, different locations, they serve different purposes. Um, and they also represent all the colors in Benjamin's world. So the way our set is set up is it's very scant. There isn't much, it's just the yellow boat. And that, I think, helps the story out immensely because I think that this is such a beautiful story that we didn't want a giant elaborate set because that would take away from the story and the message and what was actually happening in that experience that happened to Benjamin and the family. One of my other favorite design elements is the music in this show written by Alan Ruck and I just think it provides this fantastic bed of sound for us to to go along with that same journey. Particularly the ending of the show seems to me like this celebration and we owe a lot of that to the music that's been written. How do the costumes, sound, and lighting help to tell the story of The Yellow Boat? The yellow boat is different than the blue boat or the red boat. They don't, he doesn't come back to the harbor, he goes up to the sun. And I think that, for me, is a symbol of his own sense of his strength of spirit, that he's different, um, that it, it symbolizes his own uniqueness and, I think, freedom. But I think it's like the, the journey and the travel that he has to make, you know, since the time that he is, you know, um, he was born until his death. So, it, you know, it symbolizes the, the ambulance that he has to, he gets carried off in, it symbolizes his hospital bed and like this, uh, this vehicle for his, his journey. And I think for him it's like a place of like safety and refuge from what's happening in the outside world around him. He's able to be there with his family who are his favorite people in the world and he's able to think creatively and play with them which is like his favorite thing. Um, so I think the yellow boat is definitely a kind of a sanctuary for him. It's giving him some kind of sustenance to get through this like very challenging experience. The yellow boat that Benjamin draws is a symbol. What does the yellow boat symbolize to you? For me, being Eddie and the best friend, um, it's a weird transition and it's a different transition simply because the last time I see him, it's in school. Um, and then the next thing I see him is in the hospital. And I'm confused of when my mother tells me I can't see him to go to his birthday party. Kids always have that curiosity of, but why? They don't, they don't see anything, you know, in terms of color or uh, sickness or any kind of illnesses, and it's just they see their friend. And then once we get into the hospital, um, we see the doctors who begin to treat him at the very beginning, almost like a piece of machinery that they're troubleshooting. And I think as the show goes on, they learn to uh, talk to him like a person, humanize him, 
and um, try to uh, get him to talk to them so that they can understand what he's feeling and better understand how to treat him. When someone that was very close to you got that news about someone being HIV positive or having AIDS, it was a very frightening thing at that time. You know, as hard as it is to have experienced that with Benjamin and his parents, there's a little piece of me that understands that fear, that knee-jerk reaction to uh, uh, what's going to happen to me or to my child. But it leads to people seeking out information. And as happened with Eddie and Eddie's mother in the show, um, once you seek out that information and you read up about something and you inform yourself and educate yourself, then um, things seem less scary. Why did the community behave the way that they did when they found out that Benjamin was sick? I think the people reacted that way because they were really afraid. It's terrifying, especially just when any kind of new illness or disease comes up. People don't know the facts and are really scared. And in my mind, Eddie's mom was one of those people who was scared and acted out and didn't let Eddie go to Benjamin's birthday party. But I think what happened is she did some more research. And like a lot of things, we have to do research about him and then make an informed decision on what to do next. When is a time that your perspective shifted or your understanding about someone or something changed for the better? I think I will remember the ending the most because it's celebratory, hopeful, and beautiful. This sort of blank canvas that we start with, that um, Benjamin is handed a piece of paper and just it, there's nothing on it, and he's able to create from his own imagination, from his own mind, like something that is uh, something that is pure, or something that is beautiful. You see him full of life, even until the last moment of the play. He's full of life. Um, I think it's a story about love and acceptance, and how do you overcome any kind of hardship? I know this p play is produced all over the country and all over the world, um, but here at Child's Play we get to be just a heartbeat away from the people that this story is based on, and that's been such, such a treat. What stays with me is, is I have this very fond place in my heart for this child that I knew, and um, that it's always lovely to revisit him and, and um, experience being with him again. We see this person who is uh, up against remarkable odds and, and he is working all the time, even when he's at his lowest, to be understood and to understand what's happening around him. And he's got so much like life inside of him and imagination and creativity and love that he wants to share with everybody via his art and also in person. So I'm every day inspired by who he was and who he remains to be in memory and his tenacity. Hopefully the art that we see impacts us in some way. What will you take away after seeing The Yellow Boat? Thank you again for joining us and for discussing The Yellow Boat. If you have any questions at all, feel free to contact us. See you next time.